In this module, we are going to turn to a slightly different aspect of Poisson process. So, we start with the definition of Poisson process that we started with, but ask a very different question. It is a question about you can call it uh, infinitesimal behavior. Roughly speaking, take a very small time interval, by that I mean the time interval is of a very small length, and then ask what is the probability of having one arrival in that small interval, no in arrivals in that small interval, or two or more arrivals in that small interval. So, we will show that, of course, it is clear that. Uh, as the length of the interval gets smaller and smaller and smaller, uh, the number of arrivals, you know, probability of the number of there being no arrivals gets closer and closer to 1, and the probability of uh, there being one arrival in a small time interval or 2 or 3, all these things go to 0. However, there is a quantitative difference between uh, the probability of there being one arrival in a small time interval and two or more arrivals in a small time interval as the length of time interval goes to 0. So, what we, this, this distinction is going to be very, very important. What we want to show is, of course, both of them go to 0 as the length of the time interval goes to 0. However, the probability of there being exactly one arrival in a small time interval it goes to 0, but it goes to 0 at the rate at which the length of the time, uh, time uh, you know, interval goes to 0. In, the, in other words, we will show that the probability of one arrival in a small interval is going to be you know, approximately proportional to the length of the uh, interval plus an error which goes to 0 at a rate faster than uh, the length of the time interval. Whereas, if we consider the probability of two or more arrivals in a small time interval, that goes to 0 and not only does it go to 0, it goes to 0 at a rate faster than the length of the time interval. So, there is a quantitative difference between the probability of there being one arrival in a small interval and two or more arrivals in a small interval. Of course, 1 minus all this would be the probability of no arrivals in a small interval. So, this is something that we will exhibit, but we are not stop there. Then what we are going to show is that this property, you know, apart from the property of starting from 0 and having independent increments, this additional property, namely how the probabilities of there being different kinds of arrivals, no arrivals, one arrival, two or more arrivals in a small time interval, how that behaves also characterizes Poisson process in the sense that if we take a counting process starting from 0, having independent increments. Uh, but no assumptions on the Poisson distribution. Only assumption is that on small time intervals, the probabilities of the num of there being zero arrivals or one arrivals or two or more arrivals behave in in that this, this particular fashion would characterize a Poisson process and thereby leading to a third definition of Poisson process. So what we are going to do uh, in this module is uh, for the Poisson process with rate uh, lambda, we are going to get a third characterization. So, we start with uh, another interesting property of uh, Poisson process with rate lambda, uh, which will as I said eventually lead to another a third definition of a PP lambda. So, what it involves is examining what can be called uh, it will be clear uh, as we go along, uh, but can be called roughly the infinitesimal behavior of uh, P P lambda. That is the dynamics of the process, Poisson process over infinitesimally small time intervals. All right, so let us try and understand what that means. So, let N T as usual be a Poisson process with rate or intensity lambda. Now, fix a small time interval t to t plus h. Of course, that means that h is small. So, the length of the interval is very small. So, what I am going to ask is how many events can occur in this small time interval? From definition, we know that uh, the number of events or arrivals 
During this interval T2 T plus H is given by NT plus H minus NT and that is a Poisson random variable with parameter lambda H. So that we know that uh, it can take the value any value K with probability e to the power minus lambda h, lambda h to the power k over k factorial for all k. So theoretically there is a positive probability of there being any number of arrivals in this short time intervals. But the important thing is that these probabilities are going to be very very small for k bigger than or equal to 2. So let us see. So in particular if I look at uh, the probability of there being no events in this interval that is probability that nt plus h minus nt is 0 that probability is e to the minus lambda h. The probability of there being exactly one arrival that probability is lambda h into e to the minus lambda h and if I club together and look at the probability that nt plus h minus nt is greater than or equal to 2 that is uh, two or more arrivals in this small time interval, that probability would be of course 1 minus the first two probabilities because that is a complement of there being 0 or 1 arrivals. Okay. Now from these expressions, it should be clear, see our, our uh, aim is to look at small h. So in principle, we would like to ask what happens to these quantities as h gets very, very small. So you know theoretically what happens to these as h goes to 0 plus. So from these expressions is clear that as h goes to 0 plus that is h decreases to 0 the first probability e to the minus lambda h we all know goes to 1 whereas the other two probabilities clearly go to 0. Lambda h into e to the minus lambda h goes to 0 because e to the minus lambda h goes to 1 and then the factor lambda h would make this whole thing go to 0. And then as far as the third expression is concerned, uh, you can see that 1 minus e to the minus lambda h goes to 0, lambda h e to the minus lambda h goes to 0. So this last probability also goes to 0. But that is only uh, not fine enough. So what we want to make is a slightly finer statement which will capture the rates at which these convergences take place. So the first probability going to 1 the second and third probability is going to 0. At what rate do these, do these quantities go to 1 or 0 respectively as h goes to 0 plus. So f there we use this well known fact that e to the power minus lambda h minus 1 over h goes to minus lambda as h goes to 0, 0 plus. So from this using this you can easily deduce that the probability that nt plus h minus nt equals 0 that minus 1 minus lambda h divided by h goes to 0 because uh, the probability is e to the power minus lambda h and e to the power min uh, you know minus lambda h minus 1 by h goes to minus lambda and then you have minus and minus plus lambda h over h of course that is equal to lambda. So therefore this goes to 0. Similarly you can check the other two things. So in all three what we have obtained is something divided by h goes to 0 in all these cases. Now we want to express these statements in a more conventional way. We recall a standard notation from calculus. So here is a notation. One writes for a function f, one writes that f h is little o of h as h goes to 0 plus simply to mean that the limit as h goes to 0 plus of f h over h goes to 0 is 0. So roughly what it means is that f h goes to 0 but f h goes to 0 at a rate faster than h so that even if you divide f h by h it still goes to 0 as h goes to 0 plus. Okay? So this f h is little of h as h goes to 0 plus simply one way of thinking about it is that f h goes to 0 and it goes to 0 at a rate faster than h. It is easy to see from the definition that if you have let us say k many functions f1, f2, fk such that all of them are little o of h as h goes to 0 plus in the sense that f for f1 h by h, f2 h by h, fk h by h all of these goes to 0 and suppose a1, a2, a, a, a k are some real constants then this combination of uh, fj h, aj fj h summed over j equal to 1 to k 
that also is little o of h and that's a simple consequence of the definition. Okay, so just uh, keep this two uh, first notation and this little simple fact in mind. Then these observations about the probabilities that we've seen above, they can be expressed in a somewhat neater way in the following. So using these notations, our observation on the Poisson process lambda can now be expressed in the following sense. If nt is a Poisson process with parameter lambda or rate lambda, then for any t greater than or equal to 0, the probability that nt plus h minus nt equals 0, that is 1 minus lambda h plus little o of h. Remember what that simply means that this probability minus 1 minus lambda h is little o of h. In other words, that probability minus 1 minus lambda h over h goes to 0 and that's exactly what we observed. Similarly for the other two. Now what's the interpretation of this? The interpretation of this is that the following. The probability of more than one events in a small time interval t to t plus h is almost 0. That's the last fact. That is probability that nt plus h minus nt greater than or equal to 2 is little o of h. That means it goes to 0 in particular. Of course, this says more than that. It says that this divided by h goes to 0. That means this goes to 0, not only goes to 0, it goes to 0 at a rate faster than h, but nevertheless it's almost 0 and as I said equals little o of h to be precise. So that's as far as the probability of having two or more events is concerned. The probability of a single event, so that's a middle uh, condition, middle equation. The probability of a single event in a small time interval t to t plus h is roughly proportional to the length h of the interval. So remember that probability that nt plus h minus nt is 1 is lambda h. So it's a quantity that is proportional to the length h of the interval plus an error and that error goes to 0 at a rate faster than h. <coughs> Moreover, uh, this constant of proportionality, that is the pro probability is proportional to h, that constant of proportionality is lambda, which does not depend on t or h. So it's, 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 it's uh, something, it's a constant that doesn't depend on the location of the interval. Remember the length of the interval h, h, but the location of the interval is determined by t. So it does not depend on the location t of the interval. And of course the probability of no events in a small time interval t to d plus h is roughly 1 minus the probability of a single event. because probability of more than one event is almost zero. Okay, so this is one way to understand these uh, observations. What we now show is much more important. What we show is that, so starting from the definition of Poisson process that we have given earlier, we have derived those uh, facts. But what we want to show is that these properties along with the independence of increments actually characterize a Poisson process with uh, intensity lambda. So that is uh, that that is going to be an alternative definition of a Poisson process with rate lambda. So here's the definition, a third definition, so to speak. So a counting process n t with n zero equal to zero and having independent increments. So these are already part of the hypothesis. So such a process is a Poisson process with intensity lambda if it satisfies for all t greater than or equal to zero as h goes to zero plus you have these three things. So we have seen that if nt is a Poisson process according to a first definition, then these are true, these are correct. But what this says is that on the other hand, if you have a counting process which starts at 0 and has independent increments and in addition satisfies these properties, then it better be Poisson process with intensity lambda. So that's what it says. So in other words, this gives you a third definition of Poisson process lambda. Okay, so here's a proof. Since n0 is given to be 0 and independence of increments are also assumed, so therefore the only thing to show that nt is indeed a Poisson process according to first definition, we only need to show that the increment nt minus ns for any s less than t is indeed a Poisson distributed random variable, a Poisson with parameter lambda into t minus s. So that was remember the condition C in the definition, our original definition of Poisson process. The other two conditions that n0 equal to 0 and the increments are independent is already assumed in this. <coughs> okay, so showing that this that nt minus ns is Poisson with parameter lambda t minus s for any s less than t is equivalent to showing that if you take any s greater than or equal to 0, any t positive, then n s plus t minus ns equals Poisson lambda t. So these two are equivalent statements. Okay. So how do I proceed to show this? Well, first let's define p and t for t greater than or equal to 0. p and t is the probability that nt equal to n. 
for n greater than or equal to 0 integer and any t greater than or equal to 0. So for every n this is a function of t non-negative t. So what we will first show is that for every n p and t is continuous in t that is the first step. Then we show that it is indeed even differentiable in t on the open interval 0 to infinity and then as we actually show that it is differentiable we actually end up showing that it satisfies a simple differential equation that admits explicit solution and all of this would be done using those conditions that are given in this third definition. Okay, so we continue with this first the proof of continuity. So from the hypothesis what we have is for any t greater than or equal to 0 p0 probability that of t plus h minus p0 of t remember the p0 of t plus h is probability that n t plus h is 0. So, what we are saying is that that is equal to the probability that n t is 0 and multiplied by 1 minus lambda h plus 0 little o of h as h goes to 0 plus. So, so why is that so? That is so because so p0 of t plus h is the probability that n t plus h is 0. Now, if n t plus h is 0 then n t has to be 0. So, we can write it as this probability as the probability that n t plus h is 0 and n t is 0 which is same as the probability that n t is 0 and n t plus h minus n t is also 0. Now, these two are independent increments. So, this becomes a product of probability that n t is 0 times the probability that n t plus h minus n t is 0. Now, p n t is the first p 0 t is the first factor the probability that n t equal to 0 and remember the condition given to us in the hypothesis or in the definition is that probability that n t plus h minus n t is 0 is 1 minus lambda h plus little o of h as h goes to 0 plus. Okay. So, it actually comes from the uh, you know the condition in the definition that you have just given. So, from this you can one can easily deduce. So, this is for h positive, but you can also uh, write something similar for h negative. You can easily deduce that if s is not equal to t, then p0 t minus p0 s is less than or equal to lambda into mod t minus s plus little of mod t minus s as t minus s mod goes to 0 of course go 0 plus t minus s is always positive in modulus is always positive. Now, using the same ideas one can show that so this first th thing would show that p0 is continuous, but now for general n for n greater than or equal to 1 one can again show by c using same ideas that for s not equal to t p n t minus p n s in modulus is bounded up by 2 times lambda times mod t minus s plus little o of mod t minus s as mod t minus s goes to 0. So, that clearly shows that as t minus s goes to 0 p n t minus p n s in modulus also goes to 0 thereby establishing the continuity of p 0 t and every other p n t in t continuity in t. Now, we move on to proving differentiability. Note that for any t positive and small h positive again we can write p 0 of t plus h as p 0 t into 1 minus lambda h plus little of h. So, this is something we have already seen before <coughs> and p 0 t if I want to write p 0 t in terms of p 0 t minus h then you can easily see that p 0 t equals p 0 t minus h into 1 minus lambda h plus little o of h. That is because the, if you look at the right hand side that is the probability that n t minus h equal to 0 and the second factor is the probability that n t plus h minus n t or rather n t minus n t minus h is 0. So, therefore, uh, you have this. So, from this you easily obtain that if you look at p 0 of t plus h minus p 0 t divided by h then when h is positive this ratio becomes minus lambda into p 0 t plus little o of h by h and when h is negative use the second equality for the case when h is negative to see that the ratio is equal to for h negative minus lambda p naught at t plus h plus little o of h mod, little o of mod h divided by mod h. So, now from this you can easily take the limit as h goes to 0 and show two things one p 0 t is differentiable at t because the limit of the left hand side quotient there would be limit and the limit actually if you compute the limit it turns out to be exactly minus lambda p naught t. 
that's clear from the uh, from the previous equation whether you are in the case h positive or in the case h negative in both cases limit of this quotient as h goes to 0 is indeed minus lambda into p0 t so that shows that p0 is differentiable and that p0 satisfies this very simple differential equation namely p0 prime t is minus lambda p0 t now use we want a solution of this equation this is an easy differential equation one of the simplest but then we know that <coughs> to find the solution of this differential equation uniquely we also need a, a boundary condition or initial condition and that comes from the hypothesis that n0 is identically 0 which would in turn mean that p0 of 0 is 1 so that's the initial condition for the function p0 t so using that initial condition and this differential equation you can see that you get the solution unique solution to be p0 t equals exponential minus lambda t for all t greater than or equal to 0 so we have evaluated p0 t completely see there's no distributional assumptions but we have obtained it from just the conditions that are given to us similarly for now i'm going to look at pn for n greater than or equal to 1 so let's start with p1 uh, n equal to 1 first just as a start, start you know start up so if you fix any t positive and small enough h positive then again exactly as we have argued before p1 of t plus h which is the probability that n t plus h is 1 now that can happen in two possible ways one is probability that n t is already 1 and n t plus h minus n t is 0 or probability that n t is 0 and n t plus h minus n t is 1 so either and that event has already occurred before time h before time t and between time t and t plus h there are no events or no events took place up to time t and there has been one event uh, during the interval t to t plus h of course other possibilities are ruled out because if the interval is small and in fact we are going to take the limit as h goes to 0 plus we know that the probability of there being two or more arrivals in that small interval that probability is almost zero negligible okay so this is what you have from those considerations and similarly p1 t would be equal to p1 of t minus h times 1 minus lambda h plus little of h plus this p0 of t minus h into lambda h plus little of h i mean you just get this by simply for the t you know t minus h equality what you do is you try to look at the probability the left hand side the probability that n t is 1 again argue that that can happen only two possible ways the other being probability being 0 namely that either one event has already occurred up to time t minus h and no events during the time interval t minus h to t or no events have taken place up to time t minus h and one exactly one event have taken place in the interval t to t plus h uh, t minus h to t so you get this so as a result if you now simplify do some algebra and try to write down this quotient p1 of t plus h minus p p1 of t divided by h then one can easily check that <coughs> this is what you get to so for h positive you get lambda into p0 t minus p1 t time plus another error term which is like little o of h by h and since it's little o of h little o of h by h goes to 0 and similarly you have another one for h negative the point is that now if you let h go to 0 you will see that both formula <coughs> that is if you let h go to 0 plus then you have to look for the limit of the first expression <coughs> on the right hand side and if h goes to 0 minus then you have to find the limit of the second expression on the right hand side but if you actually do that you can easily verify that you end up getting the same limits which really means that p1 is differentiable and not only that it satisfies this again a very simple differential equation now again we'll use the hypothesis that n0 equal to 0 that is p10 is 0 
remember remember p0 0 was 1 whereas p10 is 0 and use that to get the following solutions that p1t is lambda t into exponential of minus lambda t this is true for every t greater than or equal to 0 so having done it for n equal to 0 and n equal to 1 let's now go to general n so here is one simple fact from ordinary differential equation theory that we are going to recall. If you have a function f which satisfies this differential equation f dash plus alpha into f equal to g, suppose that has a unique, so this differential equation actually has a unique solution and that unique solution is given by f t equal to exponential minus alpha t times that square bracketed quantity. Now, this easily obtains by multiplying both sides of the original differential equation by e to the power minus e to the power e to the power alpha t and then quickly seeing that if you do that, then the left hand side becomes just the derivative of the product e to the alpha t into um, into f. So, it is the left hand side is just the derivative of that and from there you can find out uh, this solution. Okay. So, now let n greater than or equal to 2. I want to do the same thing for n greater than or equal to 2. So, once again for t positive and small enough h positive, I will write down uh, an expression for p n t plus h which is equal to this and that implies that the right hand side derivative of p n at t turns out to be lambda into p n minus 1 t minus p n t. Uh, similarly, one can see that if you take any t positive and small enough h positive, then p tilde uh, p n t is p n t minus h by the same argument plus lambda h into p n minus 1 t minus h minus p n t minus h and little of h. Okay. So, this implies that the left derivative turns out to be the same as the right derivative. So, now again use the fact that p n 0 is 0. See, p 0 0 was 1, but for n greater than or equal to 1, p n 0 is 0 because the probability that n t is positive, n 0 is positive, it, that is 0. So, once again using that, you look at the this differential equation and that turns out that that has a unique solution given by p n t is lambda into exponential of minus lambda t times the integral 0 to t p n minus 1 s t s. Now, notice that we have already obtained p 0 t as exponential of minus lambda t. We also obtained p 1 t as lambda t into exponential of minus lambda t and then the differential equation is an equation that connects the derivative of p n, the function p n and also the function p n minus 1. So, one can do this by induction. So, if you let n greater than or equal to 2, once again for small h etcetera, you have p n t plus h is written like this. So, you have the first derivative and then you have the second derivative, both the first, you know, you know, the left derivative and the right derivative and both the left and the right derivative turn out to be the same. So, therefore, what we get is that p n t for every n satisfies this different equation p n prime t plus lambda p n t equal to lambda p n minus 1 t. Now, use that formula for uh, general solution of, a, of an equation f prime plus alpha f equal to g, we have exactly something like that. So, therefore, using that you can easily see that uh, this different equation for mu n has a unique solution for mu n which is given by uh, mu n t is or rather p n t is lambda into exponential minus lambda t integral 0 to t p n minus 1 s t s. Okay. 
<coughs> but now we have already proved that P0 t is exponential minus lambda t. P1 t is lambda t exponential minus lambda t for all t greater than or equal to 0. So, one can now use induction. Suppose you have obtained all the way up to P n minus 1 t, then plug that in in that uh, equation above in the second term of the right hand side, then you can actually use that and find the solution to be given by P n t equal to this formula. And what that means simply is that this is the remember this is this turns out to be the probability mass function for uh, for a Poisson random variable with parameter lambda t. So, we get the result that we wanted namely n t is a Poisson random variable with parameter lambda t. Okay. Now, to complete the proof, so what we have shown is only about p n t that is does not complete the proof. So, it shows that n t is, is Poisson because p n t is the probability that that n t equal to k. So, n t so that shows that n t is Poisson, but that is not enough we have to show that every increment is Poisson with the parameter lambda times the length of the interval. So, towards that it is very easy now. So, what you do is you fix s positive non negative and define p tilde n t to be the probability that n s plus t minus n s is n. So, we want to show that uh, this is also Poisson uh, with parameter lambda into t. Now, if you look at the increment of this new process namely the process n t plus h minus n s plus t minus n s say for this new process uh, the increment between you know n s n s plus t plus h minus n s and simply n s plus t minus n s is nothing but the increment of the original n over the interval s plus t to s plus t plus h. So, therefore, we can apply the same uh, conditions, which means that the p n t's that we defined here or p n tilde t rather, they also satisfy this exactly same uh, continuity differentiability holes and not only that, they satisfy the same differential equations and initial condition of course, is, is that uh, p 0 0 is 0 or p 0 0 is 1 rather. So, one can therefore conclude that p tilde n t is lambda t to the power n over n factorial times exponential of minus lambda t for all n greater than or equal to 0, which means that n t plus s minus n s is indeed Poisson with parameter lambda t. Okay. So, here are some remarks. The reason why the parameter lambda is called the rate or intensity can be interpreted in two different ways. One is a very simple minded way of interpreting it namely that lambda gives you the expected value of the number of arrivals for a uh, for a pp lambda that is immediate from the definition <coughs> and the fact that a Poisson random variable with parameter let us say alpha has expected value alpha. But there is a second and sort of more intrinsic uh, way of thinking of this uh, of this lambda why is it called uh, why is the process called a Poisson process. So, that is uh, that reason comes from the definition of pp that uh, we have given. It says that for a small time interval t to t plus h we can ignore the possibility of more than one arrivals and then the probability um, of an arrival during the small interval is lambda times the length of the interval. The third definition of pp lambda as a counting process with independent increments and satisfying certain conditions on the probabilities of arrival in small time intervals leads to a natural generalization known as the non homogeneous Poisson process, where the rate or intensity is allowed to vary with time. So, let us see what we mean. So, here is a definition of what is called a non homogeneous Poisson process. <coughs> So, for this what we want is we do not want a single constant lambda positive, but we want a function lambda on the positive real lines into positive real lines which is locally integrable. By that I mean that if you take any finite interval 
in the domain of definition of 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 uh, this function lambda so uh, that means it's so for all positive uh, lambda and so this is locally integrable and locally integrable means that if you take any finite sub interval of zero to infinity then on that on that finite sub interval on every such finite interval x has a finite integral so that's what is often meant by saying locally integrable okay a counting process nt with independent increments that's assumed and with n0 equal to 0 that's also assumed so what is new so such a process is called a non homogeneous poisson process with intensity or rate function lambda if for every t greater than or equal to 0 and h going to 0 plus we have these three quantities so so what we have seen is that um, that you already have uh, the distributional property satisfied uh, provided you assume uh, these conditions. Of course, uh, PP lambda is a special case when the intensity, fu intensity function lambda is a constant. That is, lambda t is equ equal to lambda for some po constant positive lambda. This is why sometimes a PP lambda is called a homogeneous Poisson process. Okay, so we continue with non-homogeneous Poisson process. For a non-homogeneous Poisson process, the increments still remain Poisson random variables, just like in the homogeneous case. But what is lost is the stationarity may be lost. <coughs> so to see this, let's fix any s greater than or equal to zero, and as before, define p n t to be the probability that n s plus t minus n s equal to n. So I'm looking at the increment over the time interval s to s plus t, and looking at the probability that that increment takes the value n, and calling it p n t. We want to show that this is the probability mass function of an appropriate Poisson distribution. In our definition of non-homogeneous Poisson process, there was no distributional assumption. It was only those infinitesimal conditions. Now, through similar analysis as was done in case of homogeneous Poisson process, one can show that this P n t, t n greater than or equal to 0 satisfy following differential equations. Namely, P 0 prime t is lambda t into P 0 t. So, the difference this time with the homogeneous case is that there we had a fixed lambda, but now we have lambda t. And the other thing is that for any n greater than or equal to 1, the differential equation solved, uh, solved by or satisfied by p n is p n prime t plus lambda t p n t equals lambda t into p n minus 1 t for n greater than or equal to 1. Now again, uh, one has the same initial conditions as in the homogeneous case. The in initial conditions do not change because n 0 is assumed to be 0, which means p 0 0 is 1, p n 0 is, is 0 or p 0 0, p n 0 is 0 for all n greater than or equal to 1 because uh, at time 0 there is there are no events. So using this one can then get the unique solution of these differential equations exactly as before <coughs> turn out to be p n t equal to exponential of this quantity this integral s to s plus t lambda u du and then a ratio this integral 0 to s plus t uh, or rather s to s plus t lambda u du mu to the, to the power n divided by n factorial this is true for every n greater than or equal to 0. And what does it mean? This is clearly the probability mass function of a, of a Poisson distribution and you can also identify the parameter. So this implies that n t s plus t minus n s is a Poisson random variable and the parameter of the Poisson random variable is the integral s to s plus t of lambda u du. So you take the intensity function, integrate it over s to s plus t, that gives you the parameter of the Poisson process or the Poisson random variable which represents a distribution of uh, you know, number of arrivals in any fixed time interval n t plus s minus n t. Okay. Thus, when the increments of a non-homogeneous Poisson process are all Poisson random variables, but the increments may not be stationary. Okay, because if you go back to, so it's a Poisson with parameter integral, parameter is integral s to s plus t lambda u du and that won't be the same as the integral of 0 to t lambda u du which would be needed for stationarity of the increments. Okay. In fact, stationary of the increments that is n t plus s minus n s 
is the same as NT in distribution for all S greater than or equal to 0, T greater than 0, would clearly imply that the integral, so if you compare the parameters of NT plus S minus NS and the parameter of NT, then equality must hold for integral 0 to T lambda u du and integral S to S plus T lambda u du and then by a change of variable the second integral can be converted into integral from 0 to infinity the integrand becomes lambda u plus s du and this should be true for all s greater than or equal to 0 all t greater than 0. Of course, if you compare the first integral with the last integral it says that you have two different functions one is lambda u the other is lambda u plus s function of u and its integral from 0 to t agree the integrals of these two functions from 0 to 3 agree for every t. So, the two functions must agree of course, almost everywhere. So, the conclusion is that uh, if that is so that is if, if you have stationarity then it would follow that lambda must be almost surely a constant. Thus, we have stationarity of increments if and only if the Poisson process is homogeneous. Now, just as in the case of PP lambda one can show that NHPP has the following alternative definition which is equivalent to the definition that we have just given namely that a counting process is called a non-homogeneous Poisson process with rate or intensity function lambda if <coughs> n0 is 0 and then there is condition on independence of increment. So, this is exactly the same condition that appears in the definition first definition of homogeneous Poisson process. And last condition that we have is that for s less than t, the increment n t minus n s is Poisson, but the parameter is the integral s to t of lambda u du. And the major difference is here in case of homogeneous, we had this is Poisson with parameters lambda into t minus s, where lambda is a fixed constant, by which it meant that the distribution of n t minus n s is same as that of n t minus s, but here of course, we do not have that. So, that is basically something that one can show by following the same arguments that was used for showing that the first definition of Poisson process homogeneous Poisson process and the third definition involving uh, probabilities of you know events 0 or 1 or more than 1 events in a small interval. So, there was a definition that so, that these two definitions for homogeneous Poisson process were shown to be equivalent. Now, in, in fact, there is no different argument that is needed to show that for non-homogeneous case also, this provides another equivalent definition. 40. So, as we said in the beginning that the major thrust of this module was to get this third alternative definition of Poisson processes by this so called infinitesimal properties. namely in addition to starting from 0 and having independent increments, we showed that if the counting process is assumed to have these three properties that in any small time interval, the probability of there being two or more intervals is goes to 0 at a rate faster than the length of the interval. The probability of there being exactly one arrival is proportional to the length of the uh, in time interval plus an error which goes to 0 at a rate faster than the length of time interval. And of course, probability of there being no arrival in that small time interval is 1 minus these two. So, if a counting process apart from independent increments and starting from 0 has these properties, then it automatically becomes a Poisson process and the rate becomes that constant of proportionality that we got in the context of probability of there being one arrival during a small time interval. But we did not stop there. This gives us a, 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 a very intrinsic interpretation of why uh, the quantity lambda is called the rate or intensity of the Poisson process. Secondly, we move forward. This also le led to a natural extension or generalization of this concept where the rate may not be kept constant, but instead it, the rate may be allowed to depend on very or very with t, which led to a new notion of what is called a non-homogeneous Poisson process and then we showed that a non-homogeneous Poisson process can also be defined via starting from 0 having independent increments, but having uh, an increments having a Poisson distribution except that it may not be stationary anymore unlike the homogeneous Poisson process.